Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Gremlins UAS program heads for phase two. Drone privacy legislation introduced in Congress, and Alpha Unmanned Systems intros new unmanned helicopter. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. DARPA has awarded two Phase II contracts of its Gremlins program to Dynetics and General Atomics Aeronautical Systems. The goal of the Gremlins program is to develop UAS that can be launched in groups from different types of military aircraft while they are out of range of adversaries. These vehicles would be launched from military aircrafts such as small fixed-wing UAS, bombers, and fighters. Once the UAS complete their mission, a C-130 transport aircraft would recover them in the air and take them home to be readied for reuse. Quote, the Phase 1 program showed the feasibility of airborne UAS launch and recovery systems that would require minimal modifications to the host aircraft, says DARPA's program manager Scott weisern Bernaski. We're aiming in Phase 2 to mature two system concepts to enable aircraft carriers in the sky using air-recoverable UASs that could carry various payloads advances that would greatly extend the range, flexibility, and affordability of UAS operations for the U.S. military. Gremlins are expected to have 20 uses during their lifetime and offer a reduction payload and airframe cost compared to expendable UAS, while also lowering mission and maintenance costs in comparison to conventional manned aircraft. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. General Dynamics, Mission Systems, and the U.S. Navy have completed a full-scale evaluation of the Knifefish Autonomous Surface Mine Countermeasure UUV designed to be deployed from U.S. Navy surface vessels. Using mine test targets on the seafloor and at various depths, the evaluation confirmed the UUV's ability to detect and classify potential mines at different depths that could potentially threaten naval vessels. Officials at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport are now using drones to inspect runways and document pavement issues for future maintenance. The FAA granted a waiver to the airport and a surveying contractor to allow drones to be flown in the restricted airspace of the airport. The aircraft will be used to make accurate surveys of the areas of the airport that are slated for changes. Drone flying got a black eye when aircraft fighting a wildfire in Arizona's Coconino National Forest were grounded temporarily due to a drone sighting. CNF officials said that a helicopter inbound to assist in firefighting efforts last week was temporarily delayed due to a drone flying in the area near the fire. The drone pilot has not yet been located. Canada has released new regs for recreational drones that carry hefty penalties, applying to recreational aircraft weighing between about half a pound and 77 pounds. Among the regs, recreational drones may not be flown higher than 90 meters AGL, closer than 75 meters from buildings, vehicles, vessels, animals, people, and crowns, and closer than 9 kilometers from the center of any aerodrome, defined as any area that aircraft take off and land. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Senator Edward Markey and Representative Peter Welsh have introduced legislation in Congress to establish to protect the privacy of individuals from the expanded use of commercial and government drones via what they call the Drone Aircraft Privacy and Transparency Act. The authors say the legislation will also require privacy protection provisions relating to data collection and minimization, disclosure, warrant requirements for law enforcement, and enforcement measures in the licensing and operation of drones. The Drone Aircraft Privacy and Transparency Act would prohibit the FAA from issuing drone licenses unless the license application includes a data collection statement that explains who will operate the drone, where the drone will be flown, what kind of data will be collected, how that data will be used, whether the information will be sold to third parties, and the period for which the information will be retained, require law enforcement agencies and their contractors and subcontractors to include an additional data minimization statement that explains how they will minimize the collection and retention of data unrelated to the investigation of a crime, 
require that any surveillance involving drones by law enforcement agencies will require a warrant or extreme extingent circumstances and require the FAA to create a publicly available website that lists all approved licenses and includes the data collection and data minimization statements, any data security breaches suffered by a licensee, and the times and locations of drone flights. Alpha Unmanned Systems has taken the wraps off its latest unmanned helicopter, the Alpha 800. The new aircraft evolves from their sniper with numerous updates. The improvements are many, starting with the fly bar has been removed and a redesign of the landing gear, reducing weight and enabling better line of sight for the antennas. Saving more than a pound has allowed for increased fuel capacity. IP64 raid electronics means that the Alpha 800 can operate in marine environments or in the rain. In addition, safety and redundancy enhancements include a redundant power source, double autopilot power supply, and resettable fuses at all payload and servo ports. AUS has also worked on integrating a multitude of payloads, currently covering numerous types of applications for multiple sectors, from surveillance, inspection, agriculture, mining, to mapping LIDAR or GIS. The Hilo offers dual sensor cameras featuring day-night vision and as much as 40 times optical zoom and or high resolution and frame rate infrared sensors. All told, the evolved design enables the new Alpha 800 to have a higher payload capacity of 3 kilograms, an increase over the original 2.5 kilograms. Flight endurance has increased to 2.5 hours, offering longer range as well. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.